Just before dawn on September 16, 1776, Lieutenant Colonel Knowlton and his company of rangers rode out on patrol in the area of Harlem Heights, New York. His 120 men were volunteers, handpicked from Connecticut, Rhode Island, and Massachusetts regiments that even included Knowlton's own son and brother. The rangers were on a reconnaissance mission intending to locate the enemy's position and report their strength and movements back to General Washington. During their cautious approach, the rangers surprised British pickets lying behind a screen of trees. The pickets sounded the alarm and Knowlton and his men soon found themselves in a firefight with two or three companies of light infantry. Outnumbered three to one, the Americans stood their ground with Knowlton calling upon his men to prove their mettle. The rangers did not disappoint, keeping up the skirmish for half an hour or more. When Knowlton realized his small force was being flanked, he ordered a retreat, but the fighting for this day was not yet over. Thomas Knowlton had enlisted at the age of 16 and accompanied his brother, a scout, on campaigns during the French and Indian Wars. He narrowly escaped capture in the Battle of Wood Creek in 1758, participated in the siege and fall of Ticonderoga in 1759, and in the Siege of Havana in 1762. He then settled into the quiet life of a farmer, but the military was in his blood. By the time General George Washington took command of the Continental Army in 1775, the 35-year-old Knowlton was commanding the Ashford Company of the Connecticut Militia. Knowlton was a commanding presence at six feet tall, handsome and charismatic. His men were inspired by his leadership at Bunker Hill. They watched as he had one gun shot from his hands during the fight and grabbed another. Throughout the attack, Captain Knowlton ran up and down the line, exposing himself to enemy fire while inspiring his men to keep firing. Fighting an overwhelming force without coat or hat, he remained calm and led from the front. His men weren't the only ones impressed. General Washington heard about Knowlton's bravery and called upon him and his company to become his personal guards. The importance of intelligence to every military commander is no secret. What is surprising to many, however, is that America's first commander was an accomplished practitioner of the intelligence art himself. Washington understood not only the need for accurate and timely information, but the value of multiple sources of intelligence. After the war, he said, it is by comparing a variety of information we are frequently enabled to investigate facts which were so intricate or hidden that no single clue could have led to the knowledge of them. During the war, Washington proved a master at analysis and deception, skillful at dissemination and fully capable of acting as his own intelligence chief. But he could not collect the intelligence on his own. For this, he turned to spies and scouts. In 1776, Washington commissioned Lieutenant Colonel Knowlton to prepare a select group of men for special, delicate, and hazardous duty. These men became known as Knowlton's Rangers. By the summer of 1776, Washington's need for actionable intelligence had grown from a desire to an urgent necessity. The British forces had taken over Long Island and Washington's remaining troops had barely managed to escape. He was sure the enemy would pursue, but he needed to know when, where, and in what numbers. Feeling paralyzed by a lack of intelligence, he sent numerous requests to his subordinate commanders, saying that it was of great consequence to gain intelligence of the enemy's designs and of their intended operations. He did not receive a satisfactory response, on September 16, 1776, in obvious frustration, Washington wrote the President of Congress, John Hancock, I have sent out some reconnoitering parties to gain intelligence, if possible, of the disposition of the enemy. This was Knowlton's patrol that precipitated the Battle of Harlem Heights. The early morning skirmish between Knowlton's Rangers and the British pickets escalated into a full-scale battle, with both sides sending reinforcements. Knowlton and his rangers fought valiantly, but Knowlton was mortally wounded on the battlefield. Lieutenant Colonel Knowlton accepted his fate with the same fortitude that he had accepted his mission, saying, I do not value my life if we do but get the day. 
Since the creation of the Knowlton Award in 1995, hundreds of officers, warrant officers, non-commissioned officers, and civilians have been honored for their contributions to the Military Intelligence Corps. These men and women proudly carry on the tradition of the MI Corps hero, Lieutenant Colonel Thomas Knowlton and his Rangers.